We're going to get the announcements out of the way. So I did want to point out a couple things to you. Hopefully we've been looking at the overheads that are going. Um, but inside, some of you may or may not have gotten a sheet because they came in late. Um, but you'll see one side is a, a Vacation Bible School supply list. This is very important because on the sign up board out in the foyer, there is a list there as well listing these things. There is a place for you to write your name and a tear off strip so that you can take that. That will give us an idea of actually what's been bought, what we still need to buy. So it's very important that you look at this, get an idea of what you want, and then go to the board and sign your name and then rip that off. Okay? Everybody got that? And then on the back, this will be in the bulletin next week, but we sort of wanted to get that information out, sort of a save the date. Um, August 3rd, Bruce and Caroline will be getting married. And, Um, so we want to make sure that you uh, you have an opportunity to come and join and celebrate with them in that if you would like to. So that information is on there and more will be coming later. Um, we have a couple people signed up for the Calvary 101, which is learning more about the Nazarene churches and CC Naz in particular. That information is out there as well. Um, the Wow Hot Meal, we have another one coming up. We would say that the one we had yesterday was a success, right Andy? Absolutely. All right. We had many people that came and um, in fact there's some comments that some people left and wanted us to share with our church family. Um, one person said that everyone was so friendly. They appreciated that. And they thanked us so much for sharing, um, for opening our church up. Several people said that we had a beautiful church some people wanted to know, can we just see your sanctuary? So they came in, they saw our sanctuary, um, let us know that they would be praying for us. That's a real blessing, right? And, uh, and we, ha we had some people say that they, would, they enjoyed it so much that they would be back today. Not sure if you're here. If you are, welcome. Um, but we'll just say if they're not here today, we'll just keep praying that they come and join us. Not the intention of the hot meal, but... Um, on the way home at yesterday, Ed said, you know, he said, when we first got here, we were talking about one of the questions we asked was, what would this community be like if our church wasn't here? And he told this story of a, of a gentleman who was looking forward to it but had forgotten that it was Saturday. And so he actually had a friend came and said, hey, aren't you going to that meal? And he's like, what meal? Like, the one up at the church. And, oh, I forgot. So he ended up coming. But... There you go. Someone in the community is thinking about us and relying on us to have things that we're having. Yesterday, people were getting confused with the hot meal in the community yard sale. So we had an, uh, like several opportunities. People came in and they said, where's the sale today? Where's the sale? So we said, now you got to come back again. So people are noticing that we're here. We're getting the opportunity to talk with people, to pray with people, to share our lives. That's what it's about. Amen. That's what it's about. And so let's, you know, got any ideas? Talk to us. Let us know. Let's see what we can do together, right? That's where we're all about. So there's a lot of things going on. One thing that didn't make the bulletin this week because it came out late, if you have our CC NAS app, I've been telling you there was another way you can also connect through it, through um, Nazarene Connect. But our app actually um, got a revamping and is up and running. So I would suggest if you have not downloaded yet our app that we also send through notifications and prayer requests through, go to your Apple um, i Store or whatever that's called and uh, Google Play Store. Look for CC NAS. You'll see our app, our logo with our three crosses. And download that. Even if you have it, update it. There's a lot of new updates on there. So that, um, I'll get some more information on that later, but we just got it rolled out over the weekend. So go check it out. It's pretty cool. There's a lot of things in there, not just for our church, but that you can do even outside of the church on your own with it. Okay? 
Well, good morning. We are Awaken. We are from Trevecca Nazarene University in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, we are one of the worship bands that travels through the summer and the school year doing churches like this. Um, but in the summer, we do youth camps. So we will be heading to Florida Youth Camp today right after this service. It will be our, I think, our seventh week of camps and such this summer. Um, but we're just super glad that we are able to join your church family this morning and be a part of the worship. It's just such a blessing when we're on the road to be able to come into a church and be a part of a church family just for the day, even if it's just for a service. But we're just super thankful to be here, um, and we're super grateful for the opportunity to lead you guys in worship, even though we're new and we've never been here before. So we want to thank you guys for welcoming, welcoming us into your church. Would you guys stand this morning and pray with me before we worship? Dear Jesus, I just thank you so much for this day. I thank you so much for bringing us all here together on this Sunday morning. God, we know that there's so many things that all of us could be doing right now, but we're here and we're in your presence. And we know that you've met us here this morning. We ask that you would uh, open this place with your presence, fill this place with your spirit. Let it be known that we're worshiping you, God, and that you're here with us as we worship, whether it be through song, through the word, through the scripture, God. Uh, open our hearts, free us from distractions, and help us to lean in to what you have in store for us today. God, we know that you have a purpose for each of us being here, um, and we want to be a part of that, whatever it is. We love you so much, and we worship you today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. amen.
we need to lift each other up. There's a lot of us that are hurting today. Some of us are having, uh, we're, we're hurting because we've lost somebody. Some of us are hurting because we're feeling pain. Some of us are hurting because we're just not sure what's going on in our life. And so I, I feel an overwhelming urge that I need to anoint Stacy. So Stacy, would you just come to the front? I'm gonna, I'm gonna anoint Stacy. And I just ask you to hold out your hand to pray for her. She's lost a very dear friend. And, and so she's hurting today with that loss. But you know what? Our Savior, our Lord, is strong. And He's here for all of this. He knows when we hurt. He knows just what we need. So let's pray. And let's all be willing to stand in the gap for Stacy today. Lord God, I thank you for Stacy. I thank you, Lord, for her heart, for her desire to worship you even on a day when she's feeling so much loss and pain. Lord, I pray for your blessing over her. I pray, Lord, you would give her words to be able to speak with her friends and her family. Lord, that she would know exactly how to say what she needs to say. Lord, give her peace. Give her strength. Anoint her, Lord, with your presence and let her know that you're holding her as she goes through this. God, I pray that you would be with each one of us today as we stand in the gap for those who are hurting among us. I ask, Lord, that you would bless us, that you would lead us, and that you would give us the words we need. We'll give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord God, there's so much that we are thankful for. We're thankful, Lord, that we can come into this place and worship you. We're thankful, Lord, that you have given us redemption, that you have given us justification, that you have set us free and filled us with your spirit. We're thankful, Lord, that you have given us a place to come and worship. And you've given people like this band from Trevecca the talents to lead us to a place, Lord, where we know we are in the center of your will. So, God, I pray that you would bless us, that you would bless them, that you would use us, Lord, to continue to do your work among this community, among those around us, in our families, with those we love. Lord, give us words. Help us to show them the way before there is too late. Lord, we know that it's urgent for us to spread the word. And so help us to spread the word. Help us to love unconditionally. Help us to find you and follow you through it all. Now, God, as we continue to worship, we hear your word as we begin to open our hearts to what you have for us today. I pray you would make us ready to receive, that we would receive it well and that we would put it to work. God, we give you glory. We thank you for all that you are. We thank you, Lord, that we are even given the chance to give back a little. And we ask, Lord, that as we give in our tithes and our offerings, that you would take those, that you would multiply them, and that you would use them, Lord, to build your kingdom right here in Spring Hill. God, bless us and help us to bless others in your name. We give you praise, Jesus. Amen.
to the church at Ephesus. So if you've been with us any length of time in the two plus time years that we've been here, you've found out that so far, if you're keeping track, that I've actually taught on Ephesus, or on Ephesians, three times. So you might get it by now that that might be one of my favorite books. But every time I pick it up, I get something new out of it. And the whole time, in fact, I kept trying to tell Ed as he was preaching the series that you need to use this part in it. He kept saying, I think you need to use that part in it. So um, we were trying to decide which one of us would have the most or the little amount of time to share when we got back. And, and um, just the more that we thought about it, the more I prayed about it. But now I really think that. Um, just because, like I said, it, I just kept thinking of Paul's words. And in, in fact, in the beginning of Ephesians, in other words, in, in the first chapter, um, if you want to follow along and you, you want a Bible to, to read in between the lines, I'm going to be in Ephesians 1 and in Ephesians 3. So selected scriptures out of those. You might want to prepare for that. And then I'll have some on the, the board, hopefully. But um, Paul is directing his attention to the faithful followers of, of Jesus Christ. And in Verses 1 and 2, he says, This letter is from Paul, chosen by the will of God, to be an apostle of Christ Jesus. I am writing to God's holy people in Ephesus, who are faithful followers of Christ Jesus. May God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. 
Now, in the study, what I found out that people have, who have spent time studying the different manuscripts of the Bible, some manuscripts actually do not include the clarification where it says Hold God's holy people in Ephesus. That excited me when I read that. Because I thought, oh, finally, now I have proof that the Bible is really for me. And so I got really excited about that, and I thought, yep, that's where I want to go. I want this letter of Paul to be speaking to me directly. And so that's what I've allowed it to do over the last couple weeks. And that would be my prayer this morning, that as we look at this as vacation, you would look at it personally for yourselves as well. Um, so let me step back into the vacation mode that, uh, that we've I got me here today and what we're finishing. And I would like you to think, though, with me, not just vacation in the physical realm, but I would like you to think of it in the spiritual realm as well. And I'm going to get to that with the words of the song in a second. So I want us to look at vacation as our time in our life with God. And then I want you to think about this. Paul is praying that we would have grace and peace from our Lord. I don't know where you're at in your life right now, but I know for my life personally, I could actually use a lot of grace and peace right now. So when I say I took that personally, I took that personally. When we think about literal vacation, that planning, packing, that loading up, the whole trip, getting ready. I mean, you saw I had our grandkids today. You know, it's just the planning, packing, and loading up to get to church this morning when you're out of practice is, is a big deal, right? So, yeah, I need a lot of grace and peace. You know, it's more like that is not what's real in my life at the moment. It's a lot of stress, anxiety, worry. Those might be better terms to describe me preparing for just about anything, quite honestly. And you know what? The sad thing is, is that way too many people, way too many of us, go through our lives forgetting the goal of vacation, whether it be literal or spiritual. We focus too much on that preparing part and getting stressed on making sure that that's all together and it's nice and neat and tidy and, and just like it should be and, and everything has to be planned and everything has to be organized and, and we forget to look to what's ahead. That's where Paul goes down a little bit further, skipping down um, to verses 12 through 14. Paul reminds us as faithful followers just where our focus needs to remain. He says, God's purpose was that we Jews who were first to trust in Christ would bring praise and glory to God. And now you Gentiles right, have also heard the truth, the good news that God saves you. And when you believed in Christ, he identified you as his own by giving you the Holy Spirit whom he promised long ago. The Spirit is God's guarantee that he will give us the inheritance he promised and that he has purchased us to be his own people. He did this. This is where we're going to focus. He did all of that so that we would praise and glorify Him. Amen. Amen. So every area of our lives, including those literal vacations where we're at a destination here on earth, or whether it's that, that spiritual preparation, all of that needs to bring praise and glory to God. We don't get to pick and choose when that happens based upon our circumstances. You know, like I said, 
Now, provided that we've got our list made and we're following our list and everything's going and we have everything we need and we're able to fit everything in the suitcase and in the car and we're able to leave on time, or whether we'll be able to spend all week preparing for a Sunday school lesson that never gets to happen because somebody else needs a special time that day and we just spend, no matter what all of that is, right? We have to choose what's right and wrong, when it happens and when it doesn't happen, based on what God's Word is telling us. And Paul is telling us here that when we chose to be identified as Christ followers, he identified with us by giving us his spirit to live within us for the sole purpose of helping us live a life that gives him praise and glory. That's the whole purpose of us receiving his spirit. So when we're grumbling and whining and complaining about what's going on and what we're going through, don't you hate it when God speaks to you right at that moment? <laughs> so when I'm whining and grinding, wait, whining and grumbling and complaining about what's going on and you know I just need to forget all of that and forget that Jesus the spirit is living within me and you know what well when that happens I don't see any other choice but to stop and to praise him and give him glory for what's going on in my life right I have, if you've been around again, I have a few quirky sayings, and you've probably heard it, and sometimes I see people and I'm like, what? So one of my quirky sayings is that, and I was saying it long before I saw a bumper sticker, you know, life happens. Sometimes I say life gets in the way. No? Um, and just repeating that when I feel like the whole world is against me, just repeating that simple life happens helps me realize that I'm not alone. Jesus promised to be with me always, right? And so what I'm going through isn't something that he's like said, you've been bad, this is for you. That's not, no. It's just life. And I just happen to be caught up in the middle of it at the moment. So I have that choice. Wait a minute. I'm a Christ follower. He's given his spirit to me. It doesn't say so that we won't fight, find trials and temptations. It says so that we will praise and glorify him. Hmm. So as we're planning, packing, and loading to go, Regardless of where our destination might be, earthly or heavenly, right? Why don't we take that chance to look for ways in which we are able to rely on the help of our Heavenly Father. To not just get through it, but to be able to bring Him praise and glory while we're in it. That's when people will start to see Christ followers yes. at work. Yes. When they see that our life might just not be all roses, and yet we're still praising Jesus. Yes. So this is where verses 15 through 18 of chapter 1 really come into play for me. Um, and it, it, it started to, to help me understand what, how much Paul actually not only related to those of that day that he was speaking to, but how his words relate to me today. He says, Ever since I first heard, I being Paul, of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and in your love for God's people everywhere, I have not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow 
in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called, his holy people, who are his rich and glory, glorious inheritance. That's us. Sorry. Paul is reminding us that because we are known as Christ followers, we have that responsibility to live like this. He doesn't give us permission to just say we're Christians and go about our daily lives. He says, you're Christ followers. You are my disciples. And there is a responsibility that comes with that. And that, because of that, we might grow, continue to grow, to know how much better we can know God. And he also knows that that's not just going to happen. It's going to take constant prayer for spiritual insight that only comes from God. And Paul says, you know what? I'm willing to do that. I'm willing to do that for you guys. Of all the things that I pray for, I pray the most that we would see daily how much more we can have out of our relationship with our time with God. I can tell you all I want. Ed can tell you all he wants. Pastor Wayne, he can tell you. Pastor Leonard, Pastor Alan, he's here. All your Sunday school teachers, all your friends, all your fellowship buddies that you talk, we can all say all we want. But I'm telling you now, when you hear what God wants, your life will never be the same. Amen. That's who you really need yes. to be listening to. Yes. And I think you might hear all of us telling you that very same thing. He goes on in verses 19 through 23. He says, I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe in him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. That's power. Now, he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ who fills all things everywhere with himself. Wow. Being able to relax and enjoy there's the scripture, right? Amen. Why? God's got this. Right? He's got it all. Yeah. But you know what? That doesn't mean that we've arrived and we can just sit back and, and not do a thing. My other quirky saying is you're not dead so you're not done, right? <laughs> So, sort of rude and crude, but it's to the point, you're still here, you're living, you're breathing. God's got something for you to do. But, instead, it means everything we do, we're not doing alone. We're not doing it of our own power. We're not doing it from our own selves. We're doing it with the very power that God used to raise the sun from the dead. Right? right? That's power. That is power. And that, that same power, God's power, is for all of us who have a relationship with him. He doesn't pick and choose. He doesn't say, for Allison, I'm going to give her power more than everybody else. He says no. That same power that she goes around and talks about, she talks about it in sharing your light. 
That's the word God's given her. But that same power, he says, I've got it for everyone. Amen. It's picking up communion cups out of the seats. It's going around and straightening hymnals in the bottom of the chair and making sure there's envelopes in there. Seems weird. That doesn't seem like anything. When you're doing it for Him, when you're doing it to praise Him and glorify Him, it means everything. Amen. There's no job too small. No, nothing. We're not in charge of anything anyway. Right? Talking about freedom. Christ is over in and through everything in this world and in the world yet to come. And it's all so that he can get glory for it, right? So I want to tell you a story, and I'm not sure every time I've thought about it, I think, I think of something a little bit different. So I'll try to keep it short. But um, it's about a literal vacation. Ed and I got married very, very young. Um, in fact, when we were still in school, and uh, we had our, our first child, our son, while we were still in school. And um, so he went to work. He'd work on the weekends while we were in school. We, we both finished school, but right out of school, it was like, okay, here's where life begins. His dad got him a job. And I probably saw him, I don't know, once, twice a month sometimes for like three or four days. So for sometimes two, three weeks at a time, he was gone. Now I was young and more energetic then, so it was a little bit easier, but it left me at home with a small child, with he was the only one I was able to talk to. So lucky, um, or I guess blessed, God said, you know, I'm gonna make this child talk early. And so Michael is our son, and no lie, by one and a half, Michael and I were having full sentence conversations. So this is the kind of child it is. So he is, not it, he. Um, so, but on one of these extremely long times, Ed said, he calls me up and he says, hey, we're gonna be home in about four days, and if you want, um, we've got, I've got a buddy that I've gotten to know here in Chattanooga, uh, Tennessee and he says that we can use his apartment and we can stay together and you know he's the one that had the job I didn't have a job so so if you and Michael want to come join us we can stay at his apartment he'll take my hotel room and you guys can come with us that's great right at least I would have him around in the evening sometimes and I'd have other people if you know if I, I found anybody else and it was a time away okay so he comes home, I have everything packed and organized and ready to go. So by this time, Michael is, is not quite three. He'll be three in November, and this was in June. So, um, so anyway, we, we get in the car, and we drive, and we drive down there. And I'll spare you the details, but the apartment thing didn't quite work out. And um, so we ended up at the hotel, which that was fine, because it had a pool. Michael loved to swim. He had already had swimming lessons. And so we went to the pool and several days, well on this one particular day we get there and there was a lady and her daughter there. Um, her daughter was, was not quite two, um, but she was toddling around and walking and everything. And Michael was very outgoing and so he began to talk to the daughter which left the mom and I awkwardly and you know, sort of just sitting there thinking, here's our children talking, maybe we should do that, you know. So. Um, so her and I got talking and, and uh, talking and, and watching as you know the kids are playing and all of a sudden the little girl toddles and pops in the pool. I think the mom went into shock. You know they they were right there, but you know it was that instant thing where that one second takes like five minutes and you're seeing all this unfolding and, and she's like now sort of like, oh, I need to do something, but she's almost frozen and can't move and what do we do? I hate to swim, um, but you know, there's a little girl in the pool, you know. Michael jumps in the pool, grabs a hold of the girl, pulls her over to the wall, puts her hand up on the wall. Well, by this time, now we got two kids in the pool, so now we jump to action. You know, I grab one by each arm and because the other one is, She's, the mom's still standing there, grabbing up by the pool, playing there on the dry ground, and you know, the kids went off and played like nothing. 
right? So the mom looks at me, she's like, how did he know to do that? Like, I don't know. I, I, you know, I mean, he's good in the water, he's had swimming lessons, but he's, he's really never jumped in before. He definitely never jumped in to save someone before. I don't know. Well, about that time he walks up and he just nonchalantly says, he says, well, Jesus wasn't here. That's what he brought me to do. <laughs> and he, he walked away. Like, oh, you know, so theologically, we all know that Jesus was there. But, you know, here's someone not quite three years old, you know. He's looking at Jesus, right? You know, body-wise. He wasn't there. So I guess he thought, you know, it was the next best thing. Do you know what I learned on that vacation? I learned that vacation wasn't just for me. It wasn't necessarily a time to sit back and relax and do nothing. And it wasn't just for my son. It wasn't about him. It was for that little girl, maybe. For that mom, for that extended family, that maybe outcomes would have looked a little different. And I certainly learned that it was for the praise and glory of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Right? So, if I were just to sit back and relax and say, you know, no, no this is, you know, I'm here, I've, I've got a lot, you know, I just need to chill out, I don't need to talk to this mom, I don't need to get involved, right? Um, I have my clothes on, this is how much I didn't think, you know, I'd be in the water, I didn't even take off my overclothes, I still had them on. You know, I don't like to swim. I said that. You know, like, if I don't have to, if somebody else is willing to do it, you know, I don't need to get involved. You know, you know. Now today, what if I would have jumped in, jumped on top of the girl, hurt her, she would have drowned. You know, what if I would? Oh, now I'm being sued. You know, that's how people are starting to think. I don't want to. You know, I don't want to look like a fool. You know, what if a little girl knew how to swim? You know, I could go on and on. We could all make millions of excuses. Right? For why we don't do what we do. But praise the Lord for the faith of a little child, right? Amen. For remember I said the power of the Holy Spirit is for all who believe, even that not quite three year old, right? The wisdom that He gave to him, even that youngest, from Michael that heard the heart of God saying, Help. And I want it to be you. And how he just responded. Michael had already understood. He wasn't there just for him. Right? He had understood that his vacation was living life with others. From the very first moment he met the little girl. He's the one that didn't have to warm up. Right? He was just living the kind of life that at that age he had already believed in. Jesus. And he was going to live it to praise and glorify him. Ed and I had a beautiful moment on Monday night after a bunch of not so beautiful moments. But when we finally got home at 9.30, we were able to sit down and say, oh, we're home. That's a pretty great feeling. And spiritually speaking, there's going to be that indescribable moment, right? When we see Jesus face to face and we realize that that's going to be the first day of the rest of our lives. Yes. Yes. Ask Phyllis, and for those of you who might not know, Phyllis Heron's brother passed away this week. And when I visited her last week, um, or yesterday, she was sad and um, course and I said she said I just wanted to see him one more time and I said I know I said are you going to see him in heaven though oh yeah and she just like lit up and I said well, you know what to me that's better because you're going to see him forever then Amen. right Amen. so you know I, I people say I, I don't know what heaven's going to be like I'm not smart enough you know, I haven't gotten that, that vision from God. All I know is that I don't think it's anything that we can even try to describe. Even what's written in the Bible, I 
think is just the best someone that can do with words. I can only describe a physical moment when we arrive home from a trip or from an event, like Nazarene Youth Conference that Ed and I were just at. That's where I, I think Colossians 3.17 comes in. I think it says it better than I can. Whatever you do in word or do, in word or deed, do all in the name of our Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. Amen. I want to read with you two notes um, from the NYC thing. The first one says, this trip, I have become a lot more aware of God's voice and presence. I understand my calling, which is to share the light of Jesus to the oddballs or the outcasts of society. I want every soul I meet to join me at the table with the king. I want to be able to look at all of God's children without judging so I can see them through a lens of love. Another one says, I need to love others a whole lot more. I've learned on this trip that I've loved God, but I've never expanded my love for others. I need, I need to start living love. I'm pretty sure I feel a call to missions. I'm not sure exactly what I feel called to. Whatever it is, I know that God will be with me through it all. Amen. Whatever you do, right? And wherever you need. All for the glory of God. There should not be a separation between who we are in everyday life and who we are in our life with Christ. Everything we do should be done to glorify God and to give praise to Him. So this is where I said I would share the song. In a nutshell, I don't really recommend you listen to the entire song either, by the way. Just, just replay on the, on the CC NAS app our, our sermon bumpers. Um, but this is in a nutshell what, what it says. And the part that we hear as our sermon bumper says, Hey, I'm on vacation every single day because I love my occupation. If you don't like your life, then you should go and change it. Every single day. Every single day. So remember I said, if we're visualizing our spiritual life in every area of our life, and we see a need to change what we're doing and how we're doing it to be able to enjoy our time with God more, then I think we need to change our focus from what we're thinking and anticipating to the what we know and what we can expect because of what we know. That goes back to the Bible. That's what we know. You know, Ed's and I most recent vacation, including being with several, I read two of them, who realized that where they're at in life is not really where they want to remain. They looked at their time as at the at the Nazarene Youth Conference as a catalyst to move beyond themselves and out into the future where God is able to use them. Some of them are already being used. And those that are already being used, guess what? They weren't satisfied. They said, there's more. I know God wants more. I want to give God more. They learned tremendously about what loving God means in the face of loving others. Now, as they remember their time away, they've decided to continue to make a decision to use what they've learned and what they're continuing to learn to help others and to give praise and glory to God for what he's doing. Um, for those of you, some of you have asked, there were over 8,000 students there. And then another thousand and so 
volunteers, workers, speakers, sponsors, um, things like that. That arena was almost completely filled. The only sections that weren't were those that were obscured by where the, the band and speakers were. That's a lot of people working for Jesus. And you know, that experience that they had, I would pray that same experience for you as you're sitting here at CC Naz in Spring Hill, Florida. Listen for what God is telling you to do. I want each of you to realize that regardless of where you're at in your vacation journey, whether you're still planning, packing, thinking about your relationship with Jesus, do I really want that? Do I want to be totally in? I don't know. You know? Or whether you're at the we're home celebration stage, praise the Lord, you know, I have a relationship with Jesus, and it's a strong relationship with Jesus. There's always room for reflection and change. That's called examining the heart, right? Begin to ask the honest question. Now that I'm here, where do I go? Where can I go? Remember how your life has been impacted. But also, remember how the lives of others can be impacted by you and how you can continue to impact others. So Paul in chapter 3, verses 14 through 21, he, he gives this very strong prayer. He says, when I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all of God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. I believe that we won't see all that we were created to see until we realize and accept that everything we do, we should be doing to give praise and glory to God. We won't fully appreciate that experience until we realize that it's all about him and not about us. So, are you ready for vacation? Where are you in your relationship with Jesus? Do you need to start that process by packing him into your life? By packing his unconditional love for you? Or do you need to revisit him and ask him to fill you fresh? As the band comes up to play, I want to let you know that, you know, these omelets are here for you. These chairs are here for you. This person that you might feel like you need to go talk to are here for you. More importantly, Jesus is here for you. What's even more important is he doesn't want you to do it. He wants you to do it now. Just like you were preparing to leave after church today to go wherever you're going, he wants you to prepare today to begin that journey with him. Whether it's new or renewed. Every step that we go through is important. It's an important process for us and for those that we're yet to encounter on our journey. It's not just about us, right? So I would ask you, come today and begin the journey. Renew the journey. Surrender your journey. Or just come and get
give praise and glory to God who deserves it.
with glorious, unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through the Spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ though it is too great to understand fully, then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power and work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him and the church and in Jesus Christ through all generations forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, 